have recorded. There we go. Hey everybody, it's what I almost said Wednesday again. Why do I not know what day it is ever when I have this, just want this meeting week to be over? I guess I don't know. Oh man. Um, yeah, you're here at the weekly community call for chaos. I'm Elizabeth, community manager for chaos. Great to see everybody here. Let's get to it. Here is the agenda. And of course, you know, all of you know, this is part of the Chaos Code of Conduct, so keep that in mind. As well, if you don't want your camera on, that is completely fine. We do not care here. You can chat in the, the chat window. You can raise your hand if you want to talk. You know, we're pretty flexible here, so whatever makes you comfortable, makes us comfortable in return. I'm always curious how people take their coffee. I feel like there are some purists who uh, are like, no, absolutely not, nothing in there. I am one of those people who dump all the things in there to mask the actual taste of the coffee. <laughs> so, so yeah, that's me. Um, mm -hmm. Sean, there you go. And, and Matt too. Yeah, Georg, hmm. you guys are missing out, I'm telling you. <laughs> I know you disagree. I, know that is, I can grow my own peppermint and make my own infusion. Yeah, see, okay, that is that is acceptable. Yes, 100%. I tell you what, that peppermint is actually pretty easy to grow, isn't it? And yeah. it takes over. It kind of takes over things, so, yeah. Yep, right now it's only in a raised bed, so it should not spread to the rest of the garden. <laughs> I think that was smart. <laughs> Keep it separate. I love it. Okay, let's hop to it. Um, so we do have quite a few things on here. Um, so first off, I wanted to let our community know that the folks at All Things Open have um, given our Chaos community five free tickets. If you are interested in taking advantage of that, please just let me know. There's a special link that we have um, that they will keep track. And after our five tickets, they're offering us a 20% discount after that. So, no, what? no, no, it's not playtime right now. Oh my goodness, I'm sorry, everybody. Um, yeah, any questions on that? <clears throat> That's like in a month, is that right? The yeah, it's, uh, yeah, the 27th, 28th, 29th, I think. Okay, yeah, I see it now, okay. Are you going? Uh, I am going because I'm speaking there. Um, but uh, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Uh, we were we planned to have a booth. We had a booth there last year, um, mm -hmm. but the the organizers let me know that because the venue where they always host this has put some extreme restrictions on where the booths are able to be located. Mm -hmm. They are down a, a great number of booths, so I don't know that we will have one. I think if they have any spaces left over that they haven't sold, then we might get one. Um, just kind of waiting to see, but I'll be there regardless. So if we get one last minute, I'll just throw it in my suitcase. Okay. Totally fine. And for those who don't know about this conference, it's a really great conference. Um, they have a day before the conference, which is, uh, they have two tracks on the day before, which is the diversity, equity, inclusion track, and also the um, community leadership track. So those are kind of like bonus events that you can attend. Um, yeah, Ellie wants to play with everybody. I'm so sorry. <laughs> She's very excited to play. And yeah, she gets confused when I'm talking to this thing and not her. Anyway, sorry. Um, so yeah, so that's the deal. It's a great conference, free tickets. Uh, if you want one, let me know. Any other questions, anything about that? Nope, okay, doke. Okay, for those who haven't seen the um, announcement in Slack and other places, we uh, have a new working group. I think we mentioned it last week briefly, but it was kind of lightly attended last week, so we wanted to bring it up again. Um, this is for the UN Sustainability Development Goals. Is that what that stands for? I forget. Someone can fill that in for me. I can't remember now. Um, but if you'd like to be a part of that, then you can join the Slack channel. There are meetings every other Wednesday 
in the time that the DEI meeting has gone biweekly, so that's taking up the other alternating slots. So if you already kind of had that blocked off, that's already blocked off for you. Um, first meeting is not this week, it'll be next week. And if you want to subscribe to the calendar, there you go. I was wondering if maybe Ruth could talk a little bit more about what that group is about. <coughs> Looking at the Slack channel, there's a lot of stuff, um, which is kind of tangentially related to the working group. And so it might help people who are interested in attending if maybe you could just give us an overview of what that what the working group plans to focus on. Uh, can you can you hear me? Oops. Yes. But now no. You were unmuted and now you're muted again, Ruth. Yeah, this thing. No, maybe maybe Ruth can post something in the Slack channel that provides a better overview. Since I don't, Eric, I don't Eric think. might be able to give one too because he had run that session at the Summit Europe. Oh, Ruth's yeah. off of mute now. Let's try Ruth again. Okay. Am I back now? Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. I'm currently in Mombasa. Internet here is so spotty. Can you hear me clearly? Yes, we can. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Don, if you could repeat the question, I kind of cut off a bit. Yeah, can you just describe yeah. more what the what the working group is going to focus on? Okay, yeah, sure. Um, so first, this um, work, like the little bit of history was from the events we had in New York, and the the UN hosted um an event called Ospos for Good, um, in New York at the headquarters. Um, and we discussed how um, open source um, can be used for social good and, you know, could leverage the principles of open, how the um, UN could also leverage the principles of open source um, for social good and also in achieving the SDGs. It was a very um, insightful gathering of different people from open source uh, governments as well around the world and also um, the UN folks as well. So after that meeting, a couple of, uh, we also had the Linux Foundation also hosted uh, uh, more um, discussion events where we really talked about what happens next after having all these conversations on how um, open source can um, help the SDGs and also social good. So um, some, a couple of people from UNDP um, and also David Lippert were also interested um, having like seen the, the work that Chaos Group is doing with metric. Um, how can we come together to um, use um, the metrics uh, and also relation with the SDGs and how can open source projects um, connect SDGs to their work and how can we measure everything. And it's kind of in the early stages um, because we, we don't have everything defined yet. We also had um, a meeting in or an unconference session in, uh, in Vienna um, on the first day, uh, which Georg, we also have notes from those sessions. I think it's I think someone added it to the notes as well on how we can um you know start defining these metrics with open source projects so yeah maybe Georg has uh, some more things to add i don't think david is here yeah i can add my personal takeaways from the unconference session um one of the one of the things I expect we'll talk about is the different ways that open source can have impact on SDGs directly as like 
creating good documentation, we are helping with the education SDG um, mm. or equal equality by creating inclusive communities ourselves. We are helping with that goal from the United Nations. So directly in our own work, we can center the SDGs and then externally or secondarily the open source projects can be used by others, by open, by uh, nonprofits, by governments, by companies that are advancing something towards SDGs. Uh, for example, a statistics module could be used in a project that measures water quality and advance the SDG to provide clean water to everyone worldwide. Um, and open source helps achieve that. Then we have uh, another takeaway is as we talk about SDGs and metrics that by connecting open source and what we do to achieving the SDGs, now there might be funders or supporters willing to support the open source projects that are critical for achieving these big uh, societal impact goals and this can in turn help us sustain open source projects so creating that connection somehow might be something we talk about in the working group and then a big takeaway is also as we are thinking about metrics in open source around sdgs there might be um, some challenges around this and so how do we do this in a way that it does not burden become a burden on maintainers who are already and um, we just that there was a tight lift study recently that 60 percent of maintainers have considered or are actively thinking about quitting maintaining their open source projects so we don't want to add more stuff for them so how do we do this in a way that supports everyone with maybe minimal effort or whatever. So there are many different challenges that we can talk about. And I know Don was there also, and, and I don't know if there are others on the call who were there. If anyone else wants to chime in. I don't have anything to add that you guys didn't already cover. Don, I was wondering, was there a concern that it's like immediately getting too wide or? Um, there, I, I personally got a question from somebody because there's just so much chatter in that um, channel that mm -hmm. is a lot of stuff related in general to like UN and SGG stuff that it just wasn't clear what that group was supposed to be doing. So I just okay. thought it might be nice to just, just get an overview because as we talked when we before we ever set this group up, we talked about how it's not, it's not everything yep. about the SDGs, right? We need, we need to focus on the, on the metrics. So I was, I was curious what, how the thinking had evolved and, and what we were going to focus on. Okay. Yeah. And I, I think, Realistically, I think anybody who's interested in this should just show up at that first meeting and get a better feel for, for what things um, are going to, what, what's going to be worked on. I do agree with you though, like that continued focus on the metrics part and how we can help um, like reveal insights on the communities that matter in these particular areas. That's where I see things. And I did see on the agenda for that meeting that, you know, this conversation is highly uh, relevant to that first meeting. So I think, yeah, like you, to your point, Don, if you're interested in this, come to that first meeting as this stuff gets sorted and, you know, kind of solidified. So I think that's, that's one of the main things that that first meeting is going to do is, you know, um, just determine the scope of the, of the group. So any other questions or comments, anything discussion wise on this? Okie dokie. Well, let's move on then. Thanks everybody for your input on that. Super exciting. 
Um, the next thing on our list is we are in need of more event badgers. So if this is uh, something you might be interested in or want to learn more about, two sessions you can join. Um, you only have to come to one of them. You don't have to register. You don't have to do anything. Just show up. Um, these are the links. So you can add it to your calendar if you would like up here. Um, it'll be about an hour long and you don't have to know anything about chaos. Um, so it's a, a great way to start contributing to the project. Um, if you just want to help build more inclusive open source events, it's an impactful way to contribute to, to chaos. And you will learn everything you need to know about being a Badger at that orientation session. Does anyone have questions about that? Well, if you think of something later, you can just ask me. That's fine. Happy to help. Uh, okay, next thing on our list is just wanted to make sure everybody knew we were doing a um, workshop about chaos on the Grace Hopper Open Source Day, part of the Grace Hopper Conference. Um, ours is on October 4th. It will be virtual. And here is the link to the session. I'm not sure if you can register. I'm not sure how to register actually. So good luck. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how that goes. Um, I do know I can tell you that if you register, you will need to provide um, an ID and they will verify that with your selfie. Um, that is for all attendees and speakers. And I'm not really sure what the impetus is for that, but that is something that you will need to do. So um, just keep that in mind. I've not seen that before on a virtual conference, so that's just something new. So what do you what do you have to do? So if you're attending, if you're attending or speaking, um, participating, you uh, you have to provide a government issued ID, photo ID, and they have a list of acceptable documents. Um, and then you take a selfie, and their um, whoever they're using third party that they're using will compare the two and make sure that you are who you say you are. So <laughs> I'm not sure why. Um, yeah, explain that kind of threw me for a... Explain it. <laughs> explain, that, it explain it all, Elizabeth. I, why? <laughs> why? Why? Why would they do I, that? I, I don't know. I really don't know. Um, I'm, and it I'm is uh, they've had some bad actors, uh, maybe some trolls attending the virtual conference perhaps, perhaps yeah i don't know i don't know that i'm just i'm if i had to guess i'd say yes um there there might have been a different way to address that but you know it is what it is i guess <laughs> so yeah there you go um okay any other questions on that Okie doke. Um, this one is from me. We are launching our community survey this week. So it will be the same as we have done in the past, the same questions, everything will be the same. So we can easily compare um, how we're doing from before to now. It was, I think it was two years ago. We Is that right? We ran this survey. I think it was two years. I don't know. Time. That sounds right to me. Yeah, me too. Uh, so we'll run it, I think, till the end of October. Um, so, or yeah, October 31st. I think that should be enough time. Does ever does anyone have concerns about that? Is that too long, too short? I don't have any concerns. Wait, so it's launching when this week? Yeah. I usually say four to six weeks for a survey. So I think end of October is actually pretty short, but. Should we do maybe then that first end of the first week of uh, looking at my calendar here for a minute? Maybe the first week of November? I think that's fine. I mean, you, you can leave it open for as long as you want. It's just, that's, that's usually a window that I use. Like three weeks is not enough for vacation and not coming yeah. back and stuff. But I would also I say think... not go, yeah, John. Oh, I was just agreeing with you. We can also run it for a short period and then 
encourage everyone to complete it in that time window. And then, oh, we extend it if you haven't, and we extend it. Oh, no. Now we need you. False advertising. Fake, fake news. <laughs> I will say, Good. as long as we do it before the holiday, but I think we're on track to do that anyway. So I wouldn't expect before. anyone to fill it out after Thanksgiving. Oh, yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah, that's way too long. Um, <laughs> Gaylord, I like your, I like how you think, my friend. <laughs> So maybe we do that. I kind of like that. Although everyone on this call will have to forget that Georg has said that. So, yes, just, I just pretend. Like everyone like... on this call will answer in the first hour anyway. So we're all good. <laughs> we're all covered. <laughs> right? <laughs> I'll put this in parentheses so we know. <laughs> Okay, any questions on that? I will say that um, just in case anyone is, is wondering, it is anonymized and the data will be scrubbed. I will be the only person that will see the, the, the raw data. Um, and then anyone we pull together to analyze and run some numbers for us um, will only see the scrubbed data. So no worries, be as candid as you like. You are not gonna we will not hunt you down, I promise. <laughs> it's all anonymous. I'll oh, just quick uh, clarification. I said, yeah. sorry, I'm assuming that's written at the like the landing page of the survey, so anyone yeah. might have missed that. Okay. Great. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, okay. So we have a little bit of time. I just blew through this um, agenda here. So if you have other things you want to chat about, now's your chance. I can just give a real quick, uh, quick metrics update. Um, we there have been several modifications, like to the new template, several modifications, and Elizabeth and I are going to start taking a look at those pull requests this week um, for updating to the new template. And then there's also a student who's working with me here has been adding citations to that spreadsheet. So I think he's maybe through 15 or 20 of them at this point. So, because we talked about adding um, more deliberate citations to our metrics. So okay. it's advancing. Just wanted to give people an update on that. Thanks, Matt. And um, Sophia, was your hand up new or is that from before? It's a new one, but it's also probably going to be directed at Matt again. Sorry, Matt. Sorry. Right. <laughs> um, I know you gave an update a little while ago, but I was curious how the ISO standard working group work is going. It's so, so slow. So I reached out to um, Seth at JDF and uh, you remind me, I should probably reach out to him again. So he, we have the standard. Okay, so let me back up. Um, in the metric model meeting, some folks from uh, from China have been working on um, one of our metric models to be put into ISO standards. I kind of forget which one. And so they had spent quite a bit of time trying to figure out what that standard would look like. And I gave that standard to Seth at the JDF. And he said, great, he's going to give it a review um, and provide feedback. But that was a week and a half ago. So I'm supposed to reach out to him if it wasn't within a particular window. So it, it's slowly but surely, I think, I wish it was going a little bit faster, but that's where it's at right now. So the, the motivation I have for, is, if there's a few actually, I was just having a chat with some folks about this at the conference last week. Um, I'd be curious to know which, which model we end up choosing, but just sort of what we think the impact of standardizing something like this would be in ISO. Um, but it's also just the process itself. I've heard from other projects, especially from last week, that are considering elements to be submitted as ISO standards. And I think the process of an open source project creating an ISO standard, I think there potentially could be a lot of learning and learning that we could impart on the broader community on what that experience is like and what works and what doesn't work. Because I've also seen mm -hmm. a number of efforts not work out. Uh, notably, last year, a couple of years ago, there was an effort that kind of petered out and didn't go anywhere. And 
I mean, just sort of, if this does end up working out, I would be, I'm wondering if you would be open to sort of sharing what that process was like, just because I think the broader community would be interested yeah. to learn from that if they're, if they're interested in pursuing similar things. Yeah, I'd be, of course, I'd be happy to. Um, Sean, I do see your hand up, but I'll just respond to this real fast. So, I mean, just a couple things that have been weirdly maybe frustrating is that ISO is often behind a paywall. So it's not easy to get access to a lot of the standards that we might be aiming towards. So we're kind of just guessing <laughs> what a format would look like. <laughs> we really don't have any idea. And so that's where folks at the JDF, like, like Seth would really help out just in terms of helping us frame what it is that we're trying to put together. Um, so that's been kind of a funny process we're also not, you're supposed to um, like circulate the standard for some time in person and get feedback on it, but I need to first get it into a format that I think is correct. <laughs> so there's like this whole set series of events that if one is slow, which it appears to be we're on a slow one right now, it slows down the next one. And the time frames, it just seems so long that if you're like it takes in this scenario, if you're like, it takes six months to get it into what we think is a standard, and then the public feedback period is a year. <laughs> I mean, like, you're just like, this is going to take forever. So that's, that's part of my reaction so far. Sean, did you have a comment? You're muted, Sean, or you're frozen? No, no I'm not okay. muted. I'm back. Uh, I just I talked I listened in on Shane Coughlin's talk at uh, uh, OSSEU, and he went over this in quite a lot of detail in terms of the narrative experience of what um, his project, the name of which is escaping me for the moment, uh, Open went through. Chain. Open chain. Thank you. So I think um, I don't know. I could share my notes from that. It was just good to hear, kind of, just in a very social way, what the whole experience was like. It was a little demystifying, I think. Yeah, I would, that's a good idea, Sophia, is to go look up Shane's talk, because I think it is a, like, if we want to understand what we're actually going to go through, uh, as opposed to all of the little boxes we have to check, I think that that lent me a bit of context to this whole enterprise. And I think others would benefit from listening to Shane's talk. That's it. I don't think I spelled this right. So somebody fix that for me. It looks right to me, so it's certainly wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's great. Thank you, guys. <clears throat> that's awesome. Um, and Sophia, there, there are those meetings which happen once a month. So I don't know if you're able to attend those, but they're on, on the calendar somewhere on chaos. So just as another reference for you, that there are separate meetings on that or the metrics models, we also talk about it there. Anything else? So in the chat, about put the oh, go ahead. in the chat, I just put the model that is kind of the candidate. Yeah, here's what we have so far. As one of them, security is another one, but I just we're just starting with one, honestly, at this point. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> doing two. Um, but so, like the point of like meters and the structure of this, it's a bit of a guess, and so this is what is out to Seth to get feedback on. And so then what we would do is we would take, once we kind of get feedback and we think it's in a reasonable state, we carry this forward. We were gonna try to do something at OSS Europe, just as a birds of a feather session, but because we didn't have it, Divya didn't do it. Um, and so then we're gonna, we're trying to, well, the hope would be is that we can do a session maybe at ChaosCon in the afternoon or some somewhere in that world and just start getting a little bit of feedback from folks 
And then I think there were a number that were interested from the open oiler um, project to do similar sessions in Asia. So we have people that are willing to help out. I just I need to get this thing into a form that is circulatable. Great. Any further conversation, discussion about this? And Salve puts in the chat about the Cyclone DX OSS Sustainability Working Group meeting that's happening next week. Um, and the call for DevRooms at FOSTEM is out. <clears throat> so, yeah. I don't know if um, anybody in chaos wants to try to coordinate anything, but there you go. Thank you for that information. That's great. Uh, I'm going to put this actually in the minutes here just so we have it. We'll put it right here. All right. Okay. I think that's about it. For those who are um, on the ChaosCon planning committee, we decided last week, maybe two weeks ago, I don't remember now when, um, that we would not cut this meeting short. We would just stay after this meeting. Today we are short, so <laughs> we, can, we can take the rest of the time uh, to talk about ChaosCon things. So I'm going to stop the recording. If you are